I'd like to defibrillate. Panels, please, Sister Lucas. Let's start with ten pills. Clear on my count. One, two, three. So two years on the list and still nothing. Sam's O positive. But he's at the top now, and we have to remain hopeful. It could happen this week. You never know. Looks like Sam is ready. Let's talk about it afterwards. So we knew right from the start that we wanted to make a story that had social relevance. We knew we wanted a story that would make an impact. And when we started doing research, we had funding to do a story on trafficking. And the more research we did, there are a lot of movies about trafficking. And then suddenly we began to realize that there was not much that's been said about organ trafficking. During our research, we came across an organ trafficking case that was taking place in one of our national hospitals um, that were involved in an organ trafficking scandal. And over 100 illegal operations were taking place within their hospital. Besides the sex trade and drug trafficking, organ trafficking is the biggest uh, problem that we face currently in the world. So I think it is certainly something that I'm surprised that more movies has not been made about it. The issue of um, organ trafficking is that oftentimes very grey. There's not a black and there's not a white. And what I liked about the story, which we came up with in the end, is that it dealt with two very strong human emotions. On the one side, you've got this belief um, that the value of every human life is equal. And on the other hand, you've got this idea and this basically animal instinct to protect your young. So what happens when your, your animal instinct to protect your young comes up against this idea that every life is of equal value? Who wins? I love stories that have substance. I love stories that literally kickstart a conversation. Stories that could, you know, shed light on serious issues. Um, and that's bypass for me. It's, it's not just another movie. Um, and it's also not a movie that bangs you in the nose with a message. It's merely taking a slice of life and exposing the underbelly of an issue that's happening right under our noses. When it becomes personal, that's when you decide to take an action different to, to, to a theoretical stance, to being far removed from it. And that's the journey Lisa goes on. I think that's what people will identify with. Bypass is a story about a relationship between a mother and son. And our mother, Lisa Cooper, is one of the top cardiac surgeons in South Africa. She performs countless operations and every day saves people's lives. But at the same time, her son is dying and needs a new liver. He's in the same hospital where she works and so every day she watches him get sicker and sicker before her eyes. And so ultimately it comes to the time where she has to make a decision. Do I just sit here and watch him die? Or do I turn against everything I've always believed in? and at least have a chance to save his life. Despite the fact that she is very much at the top of a game in her career and in her life, um, there's nothing she can do about the fact that her son needs a liver transplant and that he's on a waiting list. Less than 2% of our population are donors. Another organ won't come soon enough. Sam is out of time. Lisa, we're sorry, but we understand how difficult this must be. No, you don't! What am I gonna tell my son? We wanted to capture the dynamics of what goes on in a mother's heart when the decision she made could mean the life or death of a child. And we asked so many mothers so what would they do if they had the choice to save the life of their child. And most people said they would do whatever it takes. Every day she has people on her operating table that she's constantly saving. And the one person she loves the most in the world she's unable to help. And that kind of dilemma really um, pushed our story forward. And I remember being in a production meeting and we were sitting around the table and um, I remember looking at Shane, the director, and saying, we have 10 days to go. And we had not cast our lead roles yet. One day I got a call from a local agent and said, hey, I know you're 10 days out from shooting, but what are the chances you haven't cast your lead role? And I said, well, actually we haven't. She said, well, one of my actors has been away in Norway um, and is actually interested in auditioning. Um, that happened to be Natalie and she sent a tape and as soon as I saw it I said, 
Great, this is the one. I play the role of Dr. Lisa Cooper. She is one of the top, if not the top, cardiothoracic surgeons in South Africa. When we meet Dr. Cooper, she's very much in control. Uh, she's well respected. The son is very dear to her, not only because he's a son, but because her husband has passed away. So he's the only link then to that life she had with her husband. What are you drawing? Us. Hmm. I'm happy to see that dad's there too. Of course he is. He's with me every day. Yes, he is. Because? He's right in here. Yeah. Sam is the main character, and he's a sick boy, and he needs a new lover. When did he go back to school? As soon as your special delivery finally arrives. New lovers? <laughs> no, Sam. Only one lover. Lisa is my mom in the movie, and she's a very kind woman. Joel has done quite a lot of photographic work in the past. This was his first feature film. Oh, Charlie did. He was look after when I had the operation. And what did Charlie say? <laughs> that you must be brave. <laughs> I play a character called Chris Mwanda, and uh, Chris was, uh, he's, He's from, uh, um, he's from a, a, a West African country, but he's studied in Cape Town and, and spent a lot, of, a lot of years there. I'd never personally met Akim before the first day on set. Um, I remember going down, they called me down, we were up on set, and he called me down to the breakfast tent and said, Hakim's here, and I went down, and that was the first time I'd met with him, about 45 minutes before his first scene. And instantly we just clicked, and straight away I knew Hakim's gonna bring this, this depth to this character, which no one else could. So, the good news is your bronchitis is completely healed. But I would like to run a few uh, blood tests just to make no, sure. No, thank you, doctor. I don't like needles. <laughs> Come on, it's not going to hurt. I promise. I play the character of Martin Fisher, um, and this guy is. He was a real challenge to play, I've got to admit, because he's got two sides to him. He's the operations manager of an organ trafficking compound. But the other side of him is he has a family, family who he, whom he loves dearly, and uh, he finds himself stuck in this web. You have to be here by the tournament. You did promise. You promised. Sorry, guys, I've got to, uh, I've got to go, but I, I love you. Love you too, Dad. Have you? <laughs> yeah, my role in this movie, I've uh, been uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Wright. It's not my real name because obviously, you know, I was uh, forced out of uh, medical practice in Holland. And now I'm in Africa and working with uh, body parts. So, yeah, it is very nice. It's a challenging role. And uh, I, um, I like it very much. I like working in Africa because it is, uh, it is a challenge, and we uh, we deal in, uh, as well. We don't see this trafficking of organs, but we certainly, um, you know, uh, we help people. We save lives. Dion was very eager to put on this Dutch accent, which allowed us to have the international flavour of this organ trafficking ring that is not bound to our country, but is definitely an international problem. And he had this lovely ability to charm people, to charm Natalie, and yet to create an ominous feeling. Dr. Cooper. I'm Dr. Wright. I'll be doing Shem's liver transplant as well. You can watch from outside. Take care of him. I can assure you, Doctor, he's in good hands. I have one more question before you go. About? This place. Why were we locked in last night? Looks like Shem is ready. Let's talk about it afterwards. Yeah. of bypass we had in our minds even while we were writing it we knew kind of the way that this world would work and when it came to actually the production side we were a bit worried that maybe this world that we created wouldn't quite translate the way that we had imagined it to. We wanted to create a, a clinic that was state-of-the-art. We wanted to be able to go to this clinic in Africa and then, of course, the horrible cages where we were keeping our organ victims. 
A key to keeping your budget as low as possible um, when it comes to production design is to kind of keep all your locations in one contained location. Uh, which we thankfully were able to do with the hospital we have here in Cape Town, which has been abandoned for about 10 years. So we went in there and kind of had a look to see how many locations we could make work out of this one giant empty hospital. Um, through that, we had to clean up and transform this place into our world of Jalor. We were scrubbing, we had mops, we had carpet cleaners, we had suction machines, we had everything to just try and get this place to some sort of workable condition. We had the boiler room which we turned into the crematorium, um, which was really creepy and awesome. Um, once again, I don't think that had been opened in 10 years since the hospital had been shut down. Oh, we're currently cleaning their boiler room, that's where they're going to be doing the movie. It's crazy dirty, I mean I've never seen something so nasty, pretty disgusting. There's another one, that one is cleaned up. Find them. She has a job to finish. We're here on day six, official day six, which is, happens to be night time. So we're doing a 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shoot, which is great, lots of fun, lots of energy. I'm just waiting for the sun to go down so we can start our arrival scene at Midday Clinic. In our opening scene when our character Lisa is performing an open heart surgery in the Intercare Day Hospital, um, our crew was suddenly elated. They had left the, the dark, gloomy world of Woodstock Hospital and here we had to adorn um, foot covering, head covering, um, garments that kept the place sterile. And we were amazed at the opportunity we had to perform this operation right in the middle of a working theatre. And that just gave a sense of authenticity and, um, and a real sense that this is the world that Lisa comes from. Competent, sterile and state of the art. Suction. Stitch. So today we're at Cape Town Film Studios. Um, we're on the set of Soweto and we're going to be filming some night stuff. So yeah, it should be exciting and yeah, I'm really keen. shot for one night at the Cape Town Film Studios where we got to um, shoot the streets of our made-up African country, Jalo. And so what is very exciting about this project is everyone just came on board, pulled their resources, pulled their talents, and we really got to see this world come to life. And ultimately, it just takes the story to another level. Clay Tangerine 32, take one, pick up. The other awesome location was being able to shoot at the um, Cape Town International Airport um, and a friend of ours had a jet which we got to shoot on. Prison cells were shot at the old Rhodes Memorial Zoo. This zoo has been vacant and run down for many, many years. In fact, most people don't even know where it is. We had to bring everything and there's nothing there. And, but that was such an amazing scene. On screen time, in reality, it's not that much. But it really was exciting to shoot there. And Our 
Our most ambitious moment is the opening sequence of our film. We got a team of special effects guys who brought rain um, to do our opening rain sequence and it was October in Cape Town and it was so cold. Um, and our actor Vukile just like gave it his all. It's always a guy who wakes up in the middle of an operation where there's illegal doctors are trying to get his organ and then they're trying to sell it in the black market to someone else. So because it's an opening scene of the actual film, so it's gotta come with that, you know, like it's a first scene. Yeah. So the first thing you see is me. Okay. <laughs> so I need to put the standards right there. One of the most memorable moments on set was sitting behind my monitor at Intercare Day Hospital and the camera was close up um, on the cavity and we had this beating heart and we were putting the paddles in and one, two, three, the heart had to start beating. Lisha and our makeup artist sculpted the human heart by herself and um, during the operation scene she had a cavity on the operating table and she was hiding underneath. She had a balloon filled with air underneath the table and every time the heart needed to beat she was squeezing. Sitting there and not have seen this heart beat before in my head was this is going to either work really well and we'll be blown away or it's going to be an epic fail. Sitting in the monitor behind me were all the producers and I was like please work, please work. And magically as a count of three and put the paddles in it beat it and it was just that moment of oh wow it worked so uh, on screen it's actually in the opening sequence and it's such a fun sequence to watch and so that opening six minutes of the film is very engaging and it gets you at the edge of your seat let's start with tendrils clear, clear. charging we were extremely excited to get involved in this project as media villagers always wanted to tell stories of hope and stories of injustice. And so when this opportunity came up, it was just a fantastic opportunity and we jumped to it. And I think a wonderful product has been uh, created, which we are very excited about. It's a very powerful story. It's a very human story. I think that most people will identify with Lisa Cooper and some of the other characters in the movie as well, and the choices she has to face and the choices she has to make, which are not clean-cut choices. When people watch this film, they're going to go on a journey with Dr. Lisa Cooper into places that they never knew existed as she hunts for his son and tries to do everything possible to save his life. And I hope that people that watch this film will really connect with her in a crazy way and that they'll be able to see the heart behind the mother who loves and cherishes her son and wants to do everything possible to save his life. For a relatively small production, what we wanted with Bypass was quite ambitious. And I'm very excited that our cast and crew went above and beyond what was required of them. And in the end, this ultimately translates to a very engaging experience for our audiences, which is going to keep them guessing and at the edge of the seats right until the end. 